Hey everyone, my name is Steve Simpson and today we are going to be taking a look at Sonic the Hedgehog. Because after nearly 30 years, it looks like it's happening. Sonic the Hedgehog looks like he's finally getting his official movie. We've got Jim Carrey playing Dr. Robotnik, James Marsden playing Tom Wachowski who's going to be a police officer that will befriend Sonic or something. We've got Ben Schwartz doing the voice of Sonic, who also does the voice of Dewey in the new DuckTales. And we've got Debs Howard playing Billy's new girlfriend. Yeah! I've been a Sonic fan since the early 90s, with my first game on the Sega Mega Drive being the original Sonic the Hedgehog. God, I hated Labyrinth Zone. Kinda drifted away from the series after it started to get a bit... weird. But Sonic was my childhood growing up, and so he will always hold a dear place in my heart. Now although this is the first official Sonic movie to come out, there were actually two non-official Sonic movies that came out in the 90s as well. The first that most people know is the Sonic OVA film, which is more just two Japanese TV episodes that were merged together and just called a film. And the second, which is not so well known, is the one hour and a half special feature length from the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Quest for the Chaos Emeralds. But did you know there was also a third unofficial Sonic film? And technically, this isn't even an official unofficial film, but is rather a fan-made feature which came out in 2013. And unlike the two other unofficial Sonic films that came out before, this one is a live action film. And seen as how the 2019 film is also set to be live action, seems like a good idea to have a look at this fan made project to see what their take on the series was in the real world. So ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Sonic the Hedgehog fan film, simply titled as Sonic. So the film opens with some random spinning ring in the sky with some epic orchestral music playing in the background, coupled with a bit of Inception horn of course. Out of the ring we see the seven Dragon Balls, I mean Chaos Emeralds, which scatter across the land, to which the film then… just cuts to the opening logo titled Sonic? Uh, okay, I mean, cool I guess. But that sequence had nothing to do with the film's title? Maybe if the title was Sonic Quest for the Chaos Emeralds? Okay, that would work. Or if in the opening sequence we see a blue blur run past, or see a silhouette of Sonic, you know, something that was actually Sonic? That could work. But instead we get a random shot of the Chaos Emeralds and it's just like, Sonic. Okay. Oh, and if you think I'm going to go easy on this because it's a fan film, you're wrong. Sure, I'll be lenient on some of the factors that were restricted, such as the film's budget which led to limited special effects, but story? No. You don't need money to write a good story. We then get an opening shot of South Island Mobius, to which a menacing looking fleet of battleships flies over, firing missiles into the land. Yeah, fuck those trees in particular. Turns out that scientist known as Julian Kintoba has now declared himself as Robotnik and wishes to rule the world. Robotnik's character in this is an interesting take. In the video games he was just kind of this mad scientist who was hell bent of turning animals into robots and ruling the world of the Chaos Emeralds. That was pretty much the gist to his character. In here, they refer to him as formerly being known as Julian Kintoba, which yes, Kintobor is Robotnik spelt backwards, very clever. But as far as I'm aware, Julian Kintobor never actually got mentioned in the Sonic games, but was rather used in the comics and briefly mentioned in the Sonic Sat AM cartoon. Back to the film though, the first part of Robotnik's regime is to eliminate all the animals on the South Island, as he sees them unfit for his new empire. Oh hey look, it's the angry video game nerd! We then cut to three months later, where we get our first brief glimpse of Sonic. Well, someone has to get all that back, and it's gonna be me. I'll tell you everything, how it got this way, and how I'm gonna make sure it goes back. Just try to keep up, since I move very quickly. Wait a minute, something about that voice sounds incredibly familiar. Let's see, let's see, Jahil White and- Whoa! 
It's the same guy who did the original Sonic voice back in the 90s cartoon shows. There's nothing more cool than being hugged by someone you like. But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's no good. They actually got him. How awesome is that? I also quite like the design they've given for Sonic in this. It looks to be based on his character model from Sonic Adventure, but with added detail and more visible quills. The only trouble is that when his character moves in the film, it looks to be a little slow and stiff in places. But as I mentioned earlier, I'll put that down to budget issues rather than being an actual critique. Sonic then saves a soldier from one of Robotnik's robots and, oh hey, it's a nostalgia critic. Obviously when he still had some hair left on his head. Word about Sonic's rescue begins to spread and so Robotnik offers a high reward for his capture, along with torturing anyone who may have any information of his whereabouts. Prep our friend for roboticization. No! You goddamn monster! Yeah, the acting is a bit questionable in places here. Meanwhile, a special squad of GUN soldiers, which consists of some average looking young people, set out to try and destroy one of Robotnik's ships. Surprisingly, having a group of average looking young people in your special forces unit doesn't go too well and they end up getting chased down by some badniks. Thankfully, however, Sonic is once again there to save the day. <laughs> see something you like? No, 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 no. We do not want to see that. Trust me. We then get a pretty cool, though badly CGI'd, scene with Sonic battling the badniks before finally hurtling a missile into one of the airships. The average young looking special squad are then discussing whether Sonic can be trusted as he's one of the South Islanders, indicating that there may have been some history between the humans and the animal inhabitants in the past. Robotnik meanwhile is pretty pissed with the damage Sonic has caused, until one of his badniks presents him with a Chaos Emerald where he states that he now has three out of the seven emeralds. Our final shot of the film has Sonic running around an area which seems to represent Green Hill Zone, as we then see Knuckles watching from afar and oh my god, Knuckles has fingers. That's a, a weird sentence on its own. So what do I make of this film? Well, the plot is certainly interesting. It borrows elements from multiple story arcs in the Sonic series, which I think is cool though I do think it does lead to some confusion. The location is set on Mobius, which was the original planet the Sonic series was taken from. Okay, so we're in a fictional world. But in this film, they seem to refer to Mobius being more of a term for a united nation. Mobius represents unity, a time in which all nations can function in a unified harmony with the same goal, the betterment of the future and mankind. Okay, so the planet itself is actually Earth, which is why there are humans everywhere? But if this planet is Earth, why do we suddenly get a cartoony and out of place landscape such as Green Hill Zone appear? The same kind of issue happens with Robotnik. On one hand, he's designed to be a more natural looking and a more serious toned villain, but then he dresses in his classic attire from the games, which looks oddly bright and colourful given the realistic setting he's in. Same with his badniks. On one hand, we have the more realistic looking badniks from the Adventure series, but then we also get the more goofy looking ones from the Sega games. I mean, it's cool that they incorporated both in, but in a film sense, it doesn't make sense as to why a more serious Robotnik would build such goofy looking machines such as the Buzz Bombers and the Motorbugs. As for the overall look of the film, it's pretty good. Cinematography is nice, though I felt some of the shots in the background looked a little too saturated in green, especially when you cut back to a more naturally coloured shot later. The CGI is actually pretty good. The airships look well textured, as do the E-Series robots and even Sonic himself, though as I mentioned earlier, the CGI kind of falls a bit when we have the character models moving around on screen. Overall though, for a fan produced film, this is actually a really solid effort. And I know the Sonic fan base can be questionable at times, but there have been numerous times where dedicated fans have come together to make some really great material. Look at Sonic Mania, for example. And I think the same goes for this film. 
There's some interesting ideas put forward as to how the goofy, colourful Sonic universe could be worked to fit in a more realistic setting, how the characters would look and behave, and how we in person would react to them. It will be interesting to see what direction the 2019 film will take. On one hand, you see the script got rewritten to make it more focused on the action rather than the comedy, but then on the other, you also hear Jim Carrey is playing the role of Robotnik, so it could go either way at this stage. Alrighty then. Either way though, I'm looking forward to see how it develops, and when it comes out, perhaps I'll give it a review. But thank you very much for watching the video guys, please leave a like if you enjoyed what you see and leave a comment as to what you thought of the Sonic fan film if you've even seen it at all, or what ideas you have for how the 2019 film could handle the series. My name is Steve Simpson, and until the next one guys, take care.